All right, guys, uh, we're going to go back to this 371 project and possibly get it to the point that it's going to fire up and run for the first time today. And, guys, if y'all are interested and uh, want to see the rest of the process, um, just stay with me. All right, I left off last time. I had the cylinder and the piston installed in it so this time what we're going to do is we're going to put the sealer on the the piston well no on the cylinder on the base and then we're going to um, and of course my tubes all sorts of messed up now so what I do now is just take my pick and poke a hole in it I need to go get another tube, and I will eventually. I just haven't done it yet. So it's gonna take this uh, moto seal, just put a nice coating all over the sealing surface here on the crankcase. Anywhere that you think the cylinder is going to sit down on, just put a little bit on. And then come back and uh, put a little dab on the cylinder. Just work it in all the way around the good little thin coat. That's all it takes. And I, myself, I'm ready to hear this thing start ripping and roaring. I've looked at it long enough. And we're going to just continue wiping and we're going to wipe up on every ceiling surface we can get on both sides, the cylinder and on the the, uh, the, the crankcase. Just make sure that you've got it all the way around. And it looks like I do. It looks like I'm missing a little bit right here. So we'll We'll go ahead and do a little more right there. It'll squeeze out and the gas will wash it from the inside. So, I mean, don't, don't get too awful bent out of shape if it squeezes out. And cause what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it just as quick as we can, just to get it to where it will wash out. So we're gonna run the piston down, bottom dead center. And then just push the cylinder down. And drop the screws in. And on the back, you can actually get to them from the back side. Now, it probably would have been smarter for me to go ahead and put the intake uh, boot on, but I didn't. So we'll see if we'll, we'll see if it still works put the intake boot on later. If not, we'll just pull the cylinder back off and put the intake boot on. Which is still okay. I mean, it's no big deal. We just have to clean off the sealer and start over again. If you never get two of the screws to line up, the other two will go in just fine. So 
So we're just bolting down the cylinder right now. Then we'll steal what parts we need to off of the other cylinder, like the uh, AV mount, the new spark plug, And I do like to make these just a little bit tighter. So what I'll do is I'll take my scrunch, throw it on the end of uh, my Allen key and just give it about an eighth of a turn. I have had these, uh, these bolts come loose before and it creates a massive air leak to the point that it will not run, so. Just doing everything I can do to prevent that. So we got the cylinder installed, and what I'm actually gonna do just because it's mine and I'll end up keeping it, is uh, we're gonna put one of these block offs in it in the decompression. We're gonna put one of those in where it won't have a decompression valve. And I may later decide to pull it out and put one in it. It just kinda all depends on how it decides it wants to run. If it is just an absolute chore to start, and pull over, then uh, yeah, I will definitely put a uh, decompression valve in it. And I have several of them laying around used. All right, my next step is I'm going to run all this up through and uh, put the uh, recoil starter on. That's the game plan anyway. So I'm going to get the shroud out. Oh, that ain't good. I just pulled the plug wire out of it. I'll have to do something about that later. I'm hoping it won't affect nothing. I hope it still works. Pushing the wire in is all I'm doing right now. Into that little groove. And I'll take that extra and just push it in through underneath the, where the card box is. Uh, we'll put the recoil cover on and we'll see if we got we got uh, spark anyway. And then uh, we'll go from there. which is an aftermarket recoil cover, which doesn't matter to me. It don't bother me a bit. It works. That's all, that's all I really care is it works.
I am pretty sure there's some kind of bush that goes in there. I'll have to look for it. But this will work long enough for me to kind of figure out if this is, this is uh, the right way of doing this or not. get my allen key back and then we'll you know, just tighten up these screws on the recoil starter and I do like this size saw I mean I really do they're they work good they're not too heavy And this thing has a whole lot of OEM parts on it. It's just the uh, recoil cover here is is wrong. And I will put the bushing in eventually. I believe there is it is a bushing in there. I can't remember. It's been so long since I had a uh, 372 apart, which both of these share a whole lot of uh, similarities. The difference between the 372 and the 371 is basically just uh, having a uh, single ring versus a double ring piston. So we're going to check and see if we got spark. See if I, when I pulled that coil wire out, if I done the wrong thing. And of course I don't have any spark. So we'll have to, uh, well, I'm going to shut the doors, turn the light out, see if, I, if that won't help anything. But it's over here in the dark. It does actually have spark. That's all it took was being put in the dark. And I hope you can see the... So everything is good on that part. We're, we're good. So that should be fine. Just going to go ahead and drop this spark plug off in here. And next is gonna do the intake boot. Do the carburetor. Put the choke lever in. All that other good, all that other good job there. Which this is a 
an OE because it's still got that plastic on it that I'm not very, just very enthused about. Any other time, I would probably put sealer on the on that, but I'm not going to today. We're just going to worry about trying to get the thing to uh, fire up and come to life. So I'm going to put me an impulse line on the impulse nipple right over here. And I think that's on good enough. And we'll just leave that loose until the rest of this goes together. And yeah, pretty sure I should have, um, pretty sure I should have uh, waited on cranking the cylinder down until I put the boot on. I done the wrong thing. But that's good. That means we get to learn together. So I gotta come back off with the cylinder. And I cranked her down a little, a little bit, so. I don't know if this stuff has had time enough yet to set up. Did y'all learn something the same time I did today? The intake boot has to go on when the cylinder goes down. And I know there's people out there go ahead and put mount the carb and all that other other good jive. But I'm not gonna do that today. I mount the carb in the carb box, so And I know you're supposed to, this, this uh, gasket maker is supposed to be done pretty, pretty quickly in a timely fashion. I do like my my new LED shop light. I mean, it's it's nice out here to sit under a nice bright light. I've worked for a long time with dim lit bench and. Uh, It makes you really appreciate having uh, something like that, nice bright lights. Try to get my clamp around where I want it at. It makes it easier to uh, tighten the uh, screw. Come on now, be nice to me. Well, looks like I'm just gonna do this the other way, the hard way. 
I'm gonna pull the cylinder back up and we'll do it the right way. Dang, I didn't wanna do that. And I'll be a little while before I ever go to modifying this. So I'd like a, a chance to kind of, you kind of get it broke in to where I can do a um, comparison video between this one and my existing 372, which I really like it. It's been a really good saw. And the only real difference between this one and my other 372 is my other 372's got uh, a, a standard bore cylinder on it. This one has a um, a big bore. And that's the only real difference in them is this one has the big bore and the other one is just a standard 372 cylinder. Take my screwdriver and just go and tighten up this boot. And it feels like it's in there good, so it's where we want to be. So now I find that ring, and we'll put this ring back into the intake boot. And now we'll crank the cylinder back down. Like I said, today I'm gonna to attempt to get this thing to fire. And I'm gonna let it run for, I'm gonna run it like it is for a little while and then, uh, and then we'll start doing some modifications to it. We'll start doing some port work. We'll do some um, custom squish, uh, do all kinds of wild stuff to it. But first we're gonna do it like this and do something basic, which I haven't really done anything, haven't altered anything, haven't even took the flash out of the uh, the casting flash out of the cylinder on the intake where we looked at the uh, cylinder in a previous video. Haven't done anything to any of that. Just kind of basic. We're just putting the cylinder on and new piston and see what kind of gains it gets over a, uh, just like a standard 372 or a 371 or any of those in that kind of class in the 70cc class. difficult to get on that one. There we go. So there's that. Next we're going to put a carburetor on it. 
So I've got one right here, just handy light. I've got a pull off part of this old fuel line. And this is a 372 carburetor. It's not gonna make any kind of difference whatsoever. Everything's still gonna work like it's supposed to. Choke's gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook a fuel line up. And then I'm gonna take and trim my impulse. I'll do it later. Put the uh, cable sheath in the hole. I'm going to take the block here <clears throat> and actually hook it on the uh, rubber right here behind the carburetor. I'm going to go ahead and throw the choke on so the butterfly is not in my way. And it just hooks right on that little piece of rubber. It works as an isolator. help with the vibrations. Then I'm gonna take my screws and go ahead and start pushing my screws in. I'm not even gonna try to start tightening up on any of them yet. I just want everything lined up before I start. Find what I've done with my Allen keys. And the best I remember, these are three millimeter. So we'll just take, pop the carb up, get everything started. And after we get it all started, then we'll we'll tighten on it a little bit. Now these plastic um, the plastic piece on the intake boot has uh, a pretty pretty good track record of warping throttle works and it does go wide open so now we're going to take the impulse that I just installed I'm going to cut the hose and slide it over the uh, the nipple for the impulse And may have put way too, made it way too long, so I'll take another little bit off. And now we'll push this hose up on the nipple for the impulse. Still too long. Still got to take a little bit more off. And there's our impulse. We got our impulse. Throttle works. So next we're going to thread this choke in. Not always easy. Everything on that works like it's supposed to. 
I do have one of these grommets to go on the uh, adjusters. It just makes adjusting a little bit easier when you can, you've got a hole to start with on the outside to go to. So we'll put it on. Carbs on now. We'll just go ahead and put the plug wire on. Now we're going to get to the muffler. Not going to do any kind of trick or we're just going to run a, a standard 372 muffler. 371 muffler. They don't do anything, anything special. And then we'll get into muffler mods and what kind of difference it makes to have a muffler mod. There's all kinds of things that, little things that change a lot of things, so. And I think it's the right, right screw. I don't, yeah, it is. She's tight. But yeah, it's the right screw. drop them down in the holes in the muffler. And just because we got it, I'm gonna go ahead and run the, uh, this metal plate behind the muffler. help if I get the right Allen key out. Things are getting awful tight, awful quick, and I don't like it. So I'm gonna pop in screws out there. I hope it's just the screws at fault. And we'll try these here. Let's see if they thread any better. And they may be too long, I don't know. But it sure did start better.
Looks like it's trying to cross thread on me. I don't know why the world is so hard to turn. I pulled threads on that one. I don't know. We'll try one of these and see. Yeah, that one's not big enough. So it pretty much has to be those. Because that one's not, not big enough either. I'll get back with you here in just a few minutes when I figure out what's going on with the screw situation. All right, I took my OEM 371 cylinder and put uh, one of these screws in here and it goes all the way in. No problem whatsoever. But it still struggles going into this uh, highway cylinder stops about right there so the only thing I really know to do is just keep going since it is the right bolt and I was right on my assumption to start with so we're just gonna keep keep turning and uh, see what happens I'm not liking this about the highway cylinder a bit. And this is the first time I've ever had one that had any trouble. All the rest of them has been really good quality. So, I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong with the whole and they threaded it wrong or, you know, anything could have happened. It could have been a Monday morning or a Friday afternoon. And I could have got a bunch of Wednesday cylinders for, for a long time. I don't know. I just know I'm having, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with this one. So what I'll do is I'll just get back with you after I get the muffler on. All right, guys. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to put this uh, plate over here on the, where the oil, where the oil groove is and all that other, other good jive will We'll put that together right now. And it should sit pretty flush. And it's going to take a little screw. It's going to go right there. To hold this down. Gonna have to get another screwdriver. It Phillips one is not big enough. 
so it's a it's actually a phillips too well got the longest screwdriver i could find in the box looks like just want to tighten that down real good And next we're gonna go ahead, since we're on this side, we're gonna go ahead and take the, um, the AV mount and swap it to this other cylinder. Cause I would like to have the, uh, the handle on there and all that other good jive before I start this thing way to don't sit around and flop like a dead fish or something. And I will, like I said, I will have this thing back apart again and again. So I'm, I'm just gonna keep uh, slowly building on this just a little by little. Just do different little mods here and there and uh, see what kind of power gains it makes. And eventually, like I said, gonna deck, uh, deck the cylinder so I can drop it down a little further. None of those screws actually wanna fun uh, want, want, want to uh, function correctly. So we're just going to put a little socket on here and we're just going to keep giving it all the way. Something's going to have to give. I don't know what's wrong with this cylinder. What's wrong with all the threading. I just pulled that out of that OEM cylinder. Yeah, I just pulled the AV out of that, the OE cylinder so I don't know what's going on there other than it looks like it's not even threaded all the way but that's not nah, it's just you know it's just a hill for a climber so I'll get this putty in too and uh, probably gonna spend a little time with the tap and die set what's fixing to happen so i'll get back with you again when i get this thing uh threaded out all the way okay guys so what i've been figuring out so far is uh the holes are not threaded all the way but now we're going to go ahead and put the uh the handlebar on after i get all these screws out that uh, hold it in place we're going to put the handlebar on. And I may take the uh, the full wrap off of my 372 and put over on this one before it's all over with. But uh, for the time being, I'm just going to kind of wing it, so to speak. And we'll probably just run the the standard stra standard for a while. Don't know that it's actually going to affect a whole lot as far as you know, just playing around and seeing what we can do.
just look through the rounds of possibility there for a while and so like I said I'm gonna have the cylinder back off we're gonna do some other little modifications here and there and and we'll go through the whole journey together And as with everything I do, I try to go back in the same original holes, the uh, threads that uh, the screws come out of. Especially if I'm the first one to take it apart and uh, Now I know if they've been taken apart and put together several times, you can't do that. You can't base anything on that. but I just like to make the attempt. That way the threads stay in a better, kind of a better shape. Next up is put the uh, this upper AV spray on and and she should get a whole lot more steam. And that shirred her up just a little bit. Here at clutch shaking. So I'm just going to put this clutch cover on just to put it on there. Not even going to put any dogs on it just yet. I just really want to hear it, hear it fire over just the same as the rest of you guys. Yeah, I'm kind of curious myself. We'll go ahead and drop the top cover on anyway. The only reason why I'm even putting the top cover on is for the for cooling. That way the fan will blow 
the air, move the air across the cylinder. I don't really care about um, dressing it up, making it look nice right now. It's not, we're so far away from math that it's not even funny. She got plenty of uh, compression there going on. I need to uh, take it back off over here. I forgot something. We have to tighten up the uh, lower mount here below the oil tank. There's actually a ca uh, chain catch that goes on there. But, well, we're not running the chain yet, so I don't see that it makes any difference. I need to put that one back up because I keep grabbing it. Then when I go to the uh, the big dogs, the big dogs are going to have a cha uh, chain catch on them too. So, and I will do that. Seems like it uh, it's got pretty good compression. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna adjust up my needles on my carburetor. Get them close to right. Which is gonna be what I start out at, at two turns. I do two turns for the high and two turns for the low. And that's a pretty good baseline to start on. So we're gonna take and put a little, put a little go-go with juice in here and see what happens. I'm gonna take, just take this thing outside and fire on it, but uh, All right, guys, I'm going to move you outside and we'll get this thing fired up. All right, guys, so we got a little hot on Fat Boy here. Um, it's a little warm. Um, I finally got the carb set about right. It's still just a hair bit rich, but I'm gonna run that for a little while and just let it break in at that. Uh, if you like this video, I know it's a little longer today, but uh, I had the intentions of getting the thing to fire up and run. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't care, subscribe.